This forest that I'm currently sitting in is part of the battlefield of Verdun from February 21st, 1916 to the 18th of December, 1916, a nearly 10 month long battle was fought in this area that rivals all battles in human history for its level of suffering that the men here endured. Historian Anthony Prost said it best when he said, like Auschwitz, Verdun marks a transgression in the limits of the human condition. When talking about pretty much all battlefields of the First World War, it's hard to imagine what this place would have looked like during the fighting itself. In fact, they estimate that over the battlefield of Verdun that for every meter of land, a thousand artillery shells landed, which is an absolutely unbelievable statistic, meaning that this landscape suffered incredible mutilation due to the fighting. And so the French government decided that instead of recultivating the land like the people in Ypres for the most part had done. Mostly the battlefield here at Verdun was either left to nature or in this case around here they intentionally planted trees and allowed animals and nature to retake the land to give life to this area that once saw unimaginable death and suffering. Here on top of the Douaumont Plateau that makes up a portion of the Verdun battlefield sits the Douaumont Ossuary. Within the ossuary itself is an estimated 130,000 men whose bones have been collected from this area around here over the years. And those bones are actually visible, piled up inside through those tiny windows right there. And out of respect for those men, I will not be showing you those bones. So the discarded remains of those 130,000 men that have so far been collected from this area that are placed in this ossuary, both French and German, only make up a portion of the total death toll here at Verdun from that battle. They're, they estimate that there's over 300,000 total deaths from that battle, and there could be anywhere from 80,000 to 100,000 men whose remains are still missing, lost out into the battlefields, yet to be discovered. This is Fort Douaumont. Fort Douaumont was actually built in the 1880s, I believe, after the Franco-Prussian War to protect the French frontier here against future German attacks. And then lo and behold, the First World War begins and this becomes an absolute focal point of fighting during the Battle of Verdun. After the Germans launched their attack here on the 21st of February, 1916, they were able to capture this fort on the 25th of February actually by a small raiding party of about 80 men. They were able to climb into the fort using one of these various small uh, gun port openings. They went into the interior of the fort, found that it was incredibly undermanned, under strength, and they caught the French garrison by surprise and were able to capture it. So after the Germans were able to capture and occupy this fort on the 25th of February, 1916, this was one of the most important frontline staging areas for the Battle of Verdun. Um, there was an estimated 3,000 men in this fort at any given time, using these rooms for bunkers, kitchens, ammunition storage, anything. Um, really, the French objectives around the Battle of Verdun in that middle portion of the battle were centered around retaking this fort from the Germans. And they were finally able to do that on the 24th of October, uh, 1916, at of course a tremendous loss of life. Fort Douaumont was definitely one of the most heavily reinforced fortifications in this entire region of France. And that's real evident when you come into areas of the fort like this to see a 155 millimeter gun turret that has this absolutely ridiculous mechanism in order to turn it in either direction. This is one of the large turrets that's visible from the outside of a fort and this would have definitely caused a lot of damage to whoever was on the receiving end and whoever was in control of this gun turret definitely had an upper hand for miles and miles around this region, could hit anything they practically wanted to. 
These are some original bunk beds, I guess you can call them, here in one of the barracks rooms at Fort Duomal. Um, it's really incredible to be able to stand here and to touch these things that the men that fought here slept on, where they hung up their stuff. It's a very eerie feeling, but I'm very grateful to be here for sure. These are defensive barricades here in the hallways of Fort Duomont, and I believe these were not constructed when the fort itself was being constructed, but these were put here by the men themselves, by the garrison, as a means to protect themselves from attackers coming down the hallway. So you get some cover and you also get some firing ports that look down the length of the hallway that you can shoot from. Definitely a good idea. This is pretty sad. Um, apparently in this room right here, um, while the Germans were occupying this fort, a French 40 centimeter shell was able to pierce through the wall and explode within this room and killed 30 Germans. So there's a little shrine here to those men. Wow. So I'm here now on the top of Fort Duomont. And as you can see, the earth around here is completely mutilated and cratered. Like I said, a thousand shells for every meter of land here in the Verdun sector. Absolutely insane. And then right here, here's that 155 millimeter gun that I showed you from the inside with that crazy mechanism. So this thing could have turned around and could have fired miles and miles around this whole sector. But again, I can't emphasize enough just how beaten up this landscape is. These are original French trenches just near Fort Duomont. These ones actually here were communication trenches, so not frontline trenches. So they lead up to Fort Duomont, which leads to the front line. And uh, due to the massive amount of shelling in this area, the French wanted to reinforce these trenches to keep them from caving in. So they put in these concrete walls on either side of the trench. So originally this entire trench down the whole length of it would have had these concrete walls. Ah, that is just crazy. During the Battle of Verdun, there were a total of nine villages in the sector that were completely blown off the face of the earth by the artillery and the fighting itself. And this is one of them. This is the village of Duamont. Obviously, as you can look around, there is nothing here but shell holes and craters. And these little posts, each one of them representing a house or a building belonging to a family or a business that used to stand here before the war. So like I said, these posts represent either the name of a family that had a house in this area or a business. So this belonged to, looked like Colten. If we walk along this way. This looks like the tobacco. So the tobacco shop was here, and that's the name of the family that owned it. And then this one over here. Looks like it says Telegraph. Agent Telegraph. So a telegraph building was here. Looks like we got one little piece of something that was left over from the fighting but other than that that is it so fortunately or unfortunately depending on how you want to look at it the population of this village was evacuated in early 1916 due to the close proximity of the front line which is in that direction during the battle of Verdun itself after Fort Duomont was captured on the 25th of February 1916, Fort Duomont is over there. 
This village in the days after saw some incredibly vicious fighting, some hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, house-to-house -house fighting using grenades, bayonets, and bare hands. And this was captured by the Germans and then was finally recaptured by the French after Fort Douaumont was retaken in October 1916. When the population of this village came back in 1919, they realized that due to the mutilation and devastation of the landscape, the risk of, its, of explosives, this village would not be rebuilt. But they did decide to rebuild one building, and that is right here behind me. That's the Duomont Chapel. This is a really striking and powerful monument here in the former village of Duomo that is simply dedicated to the men that fought and died in the Great War. But it is definitely thought-provoking. Wow. This is Fort Vaux. Uh, you might recognize that name if you've ever played Battlefield 1. Uh, but this saw a fierce French defense during the Battle of Verdun. Uh, on June the 1st, 1916, the Germans came at this fort with about 10,000 men. It took them about a week to finally get the French in this fort to surrender. By that time, the French were down to 574 men within the fort itself. And in that attack, the Germans lost 3,000 men. So a very stiff resistance from the French within this fort. And then the fort was finally recaptured by the French after it was evacuated by the Germans on November the 2nd, after a large 220 millimeter shell was detonated with inside the fort itself and killed a large number of Germans within it. The Germans evacuated on November the 2nd and then it was subsequently reoccupied by the French. Inside of Fort Vaux itself, the French defenders that were in here were left with nothing by the end of the fight in terms of food and water. So they were licking the condensation off of the walls, even going as far as drinking their own urine, anything to get some sort of hydration, no food to speak of. And by the time the Germans made their final assault inside the fort itself, they were going hallway to hallway with grenades, flamethrowers, rifle butts, bayonets, and bare hands to dislodge the French from inside this fort. But when the French finally surrendered this fort to the Germans, the Germans were so astonished by the tenacity of the French defense within this fort that they gave them an honorable surrender with a small ceremony. So right here we have more of these defensive barricades that are here uh, within the hallways of Fort Bow. These, like I mentioned at Fort Duomont, were not part of the original construction of the fort. These were placed here by the men themselves to get some sort of protection down these hallways as they knew at one point the Germans would be storming in this way to try and dislodge them from the fort. And you can see in the walls around me the evidence of the fighting that took place here. In fact, I believe that this portion of the ceiling that is missing uh, happened from artillery fire above that the, the shock wave and the force of the impact from the artillery above caused this portion of the roof to collapse down. And you can imagine being inside this fort at that time with the noise and the concussion and the chaos and the darkness even sometimes must have been just a terrible existence. Here walking down the rest of Fort Vaux, there's Signs of more battle on the wall, some ricochet marks and bullet holes. Definitely a really scarred place. Here we got the, or at least one of the latrines within the fort. And uh, I definitely got to watch out because I have seen a lot of bats in here and I don't want them flying into me. But yeah, pretty spooky in here to be honest. Here in one of the chambers of Fort Bow is an example of a light gauge railway. They would have been constructing these behind the front lines to move up supplies quickly, 
without having to use horsepower or manpower. But right next to that is probably the widest bunk bed I think I've ever seen. Dang, you could fit a lot of dudes on that. Here we have some examples of French 75 millimeter field guns inside Fort Vaux. There's one right here. Walk down this way. We got another right here. That is super cool. And they did have these pretty cool little traverse mechanisms right here that you could swing them back and forth on. Nice. The Battle of Verdun was ultimately a French victory. The Germans were not able to capture Verdun itself, nor was General Falkenhayn, the German general in charge of the attack here, able to achieve his five to two kill ratio that he had hoped for. In the end, the casualties ended up being about even. He did not bleed the French army white, which was his main goal really in the first place. The Battle of Verdun really is the First World War in a microcosm in terms of its devastation and its horror, and it has come to symbolize the French effort in the entirety of the First World War, which is, in their history, their bloodiest war.